Hey, what's happening everybody? Welcome to the art studio. Today I'm continuing my lens reviews for Micro Four Thirds lenses. And I have in my hands the Panasonic Leica DG Sumalux 12 millimeter 1.4 prime lens for micro four thirds. I've got lots of photographic inspirations pulled up to share, so stay tuned. <laughs> One of the things I love about Micro Four Thirds, I say it all the time, is that the lenses are so tiny and when I work with Micro Four Thirds versus full frame, I tend to roll out with lots of lenses in my bag because they're small and lightweight and you know lenses, every single lens gives you kind of a different way to see the world and look at things and uh, this lens is no different. This is one of my favorites, the 12 millimeter from Leica. Uh, let's take a closer look real quick. Uh, this is a very small lens considering it is a 12 millimeter prime and you can turn AF on and off right here on it. That's kind of nice when I'm working in a video format. I want to quickly go to from auto to manual focus. Uh, on the lens itself, one of the things I like about the like of lenses or many of them anyway is that you can go in a full auto and just control your aperture from camera but you can also with nice solid clicks here so it's holding in place uh, you can change your aperture here and that's kind of a beautiful thing sometimes as well just to be able to pick your aperture that way. Uh, lastly I'll say that there is a nice solid lens hood. There are the ability to attach uh, neutral density filters, polarizing filters, all those good things because there is a threaded screw on the front and so that's kind of the close up here. Let's dive into B&H real quick, take a look at the price point. Uh, this is not a cheap lens. This is a $1,297.99 lens, so $1,300. Um, it is a full frame equivalent uh, to a 24 millimeter lens. Uh, it is weather resistant construction. Now some lenses will say splash proof, freeze proof design. Uh, this says weather resistant. Uh, so I'm, I, I'm not sure how weather sealed this is. I can tell you that I've been out in poor weather with it many times. Uh, never had any issues. Uh, there's lots of reviews here. You can see uh, what other people think about it. With that said, let's dive into some inspirations and photographs we've taken with this particular lens. Uh, in my Lightroom catalog here, I have pulled up 23 photographs. So just a variety of different things that we've captured uh, on this 12 millimeter lens. Now you think of having a prime 12 and you think, well, that's a low light lens and oh, for sure it is. But when I think of having a prime 12, I think about depth of field a lot. So in situations like this where I'm doing a portrait, looking at the New York Stock Exchange in the background with our subject in the foreground, I still want to have some fall off and lead the viewer's attention to the, to the subject, not everything that's around me. And that's where not using a 2.8 lens outdoors during the daytime is a beautiful thing because as you can see here, I'm, I'm at 1.7. I have a little pro photo strobe off here kind of filling and lighting from the same direction that the light's hitting the buildings on our subject. You focus on the subject, the building becomes a little bit secondary. I think there's another group shot here too. Yes. Uh, and you can see that the building becomes like the secondary focal point. So food for thought. Yes, uh, being prime, I think of it low light most of the time. It's also great during the day because at 2.8, that building would be more in focus. We wouldn't be leading the viewer's attention as much. So a 12 prime open really wide really is a beautiful thing in all situations. Uh, here we're at the Palace Hotel, just a hotel room. Uh, in New York uh, and here I'm working at about 2.8 and this lens is just great in hotel rooms. You know, if you're working with ambient light or uh, here I little have a little flash kind of kicking off here too, uh, you can get that really beautiful glow in the room. And so just food for thought, great little lens for working in tight spaces uh, like a hotel room. Here we're on top of a building overlooking Los Angeles. Uh, and we are doing a building in uh, a wedding in the building just below the moon there. And so just a kind of a quick shot here. I'm at a 30th of a second ISO 800 at F1.4. But capturing city nightscapes is another reason to work with a, uh, a 1.4 lens, a really wide one especially. 
And we're gonna be doing a wedding in the building to your right, which is the Biltmore Millennium. So just capturing a nighttime view of the city, kind of a scene setter for things. I love this lens when I'm photographing details. Here we, we have some cufflinks and a little jewel box. And you can see, you know, getting in really close to that jewel box allows that depth of field to work to our benefit, lead the viewer's attention where we want them to look. Here I'm at 1.4 as well, ISO 100 at 200, 200th of a second. Depth of field, once again, this is interesting because you, you think 12 millimeter, how tight is the depth of field? It's pretty tight, especially on details. If you tilt the camera in any way, shape, or form, you'll lose depth. Uh, and so you can see the pocket knife perfectly in focus, but at 1.4, the watch comes out of focus ever so slightly. So yeah, it's, it's pretty tight at 1.4. Um, here, we are in the Biltmore Millennium in the bar, really dark space. And I'm not posing this or lighting this. So I love this in dark situations like this because I can just shoot photojournalistically and candidly and capture moments. There's actually a shot of her uh, in the same space lit with a strobe with a completely different lens in another review, but you can kind of see the difference of this being completely candid, just saw her putting on her earring. It was so pretty there, really natural. Looking, you know, sometimes we work in cathedrals and it's a bright sunny day, there's lots of light pouring in. Other times it can be nighttime or very dark. This is just a shot looking back at all the guests prior to everybody coming in uh, and utilizing that raw file on the Lumix GH5, pulling down those highlights a little bit, lifting the shadows a little bit. Um, but again, I'm at ISO 1000 here. This is how dark it is, uh, 1.4 at 125th. Uh, kind of get that perspective. Um, when I'm working in a reception area and I'm lighting the dance floor or the entire room, this is a great lens to go to also. Here, really wide shot at celebrity party planner David Tutera's wedding uh, during their first dance. I am at ISO 1000, an 80th of a second at f3.5. So, uh, you know, we're working at 3.5 because that's how much light we've lit the dance floor with. Uh, but it kind of showcases the space. You can see the light up in the balcony that's kind of filling the room there, uh, cutting through some of the smoke. Depth of field, once again, again, tight situation here where the subject is in focus, the cake is pretty close to in focus. We start to get a little fall off. Uh, here I'm at 1.8, ISO 800, 30th of a second. No flash used, just using the lighting that's in the room there. So kind of a candid moment. Uh, my wife and I visited uh, on assignment in Verona, Italy, but then spent a few days in Venice. If you've ever been to Venice, you know how dark these streets are. Um, remarkably dark. Uh, here, and that's where this lens is just beautiful. Here I'm at uh, ISO 1600, a 50th of a second at 1.4. And here we go once again, just capturing, you know, exposing for the highlights, getting the glimmer on the water. Still a little bit of detail in the shadows there. And again, here is Venice once again, ISO 2500. So anytime I'm working in a really dark city or dark uh, places that I'm navigating, you gotta have a prime, you gotta have a wide lens, especially to capture those cityscapes. This is just the daytime kind of out capturing the spirit of the city, uh, kind of a worker early in the morning, just kind of bringing out uh, some fruits and vegetables to the stands, uh, capturing just the people as they walk in the city and kind of, you know, that people photography and lifestyle photography of the space itself. So this is a wedding uh, up at Lion Rock Farm in Connecticut, really pretty tent wedding for one of our couples. And I love this shot, kind of focusing between the couple. And a lot of times we'll sneak around to get so many different angles of the toast the couple looking on, the person giving the toast, close-ups wide. And this gave us a situation to kind of get down low behind them. You can't see it actually, but there's a strobe firing from the background and we're blocking the strobe with the groom here. And that's what's lighting the entire scene and everything that we see here. There's also another strobe to the far right, kind of lighting the tent from this way. And so those two things allow us to kind of work the room creatively and you can see leading the viewer's attention towards where the toast is being given, but still getting the bride and groom's backs a lot of beautiful there, um, beautiful angle. Here, a guy's giving a toast in a hotel room, working completely natural light, as you can see. Um, I'm at ISO 800, 
and groom here in the center. Uh, I go to this lens pretty often in infrared photography also. This is a Lumix G7 converted to infrared. Uh, and you can see kind of a, just that perspective working in infrared scenario. Here, late at night, everybody's on the dance floor, quick group shot, no strobes firing at all, but that's where the 1.4 comes in so handy. I'm at ISO 2000 in this situation uh, with a Lumix G9, uh, 50th of a second. So you can see really pushing the envelope of everything and a 1.4 is key in those situations. Uh, just kind of overlooking a table, the, a 24, full frame or 12 micro four thirds. I love using this lens for capturing just table details, the silverware or napkins, uh, especially these little round tables. You get the whole perspective of it. A simple little shot there of some details. Um, this is also something to consider. This is again uh, an infrared converted G7. No strobes firing. And a lot of times we don't think to use our infrared cameras indoors but look how beautiful it is. Uh, crazy as this sounds, I'm at ISO 200 here, 100th of a second at 1.6 with this lens. And look at how the room just glows. If I were not working in infrared, uh, we would be pushing our ISOs considerably higher and we wouldn't be getting as much detail in the chandeliers. And if we didn't light the room, we would get hardly any detail in the chandeliers unless we pull the highlights completely back, do kind of that HDRE kind of effect, uh, which I try to avoid when I can. So this is how you can utilize infrared, even indoors, anytime there's a condescent lighting sch uh, scheme in the room. Uh, really works out well. So consider infrared even in these moments. One last shot here again, same castle. We're outdoors at this point. Uh, closing shot of the night, really beautiful scenario. Uh, and we're only using the light from the building and uh, kind of a lamp post over here. And again, 1 60th of a second, 1.4 ISO 1250 kind of give you that closing shot. So this is a great go-to lens for daytime when you really need to focus on depth of field, lead the viewer's attention where you want them to look. This is incredible lens in tight situations, dark situations, dark cityscapes, closing shots at weddings. Uh, when you need faster glass to capture those moments and you're not working with strobe, uh, kind of a go-to. Uh, with that said, that's kind of a wrap on this 12 millimeter 1.4 from Leica. And uh, we'll be sharing more content, more lens reviews along the way. And I appreciate you joining me here. Hope this was helpful in sharing what the 1.4 Leica can do. Have a great one, everybody. Take care.